Thank you, thank you. Um, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Zhuo Xiaomeng. Um, I'm from Pyongyang, a PhD student, and I also work at the Huawei Munich Research Center as well. Um, and I'm very happy today to present our work uh, with title Topology Preserving Simplification of OpenStreetMap uh, Network Data for Large Scale Simulation in Zumo. And this is a joint work uh, with support from uh, Professor Kno from to Munich and uh, uh, Professor Zomer from to Tukistan and also other researchers from to Tumcrit in Singapore and uh, also our colleagues at Huawei Munich Research Center. Uh, so um, first, I would like to do a rapid introduction and also introduce our motivation why we want to do a, a, a network generator. Um, so basically, we know that uh, OpenStreetMap data is a very common data source to use for generating traffic simulation in road network. And uh, luckily, Zumo is able to convert it via NetConvert. Um, however, you can see that this is, uh, if we direct use uh, OpenStreetMap data and fit it into networks, those are the common uh, errors that we can find in the resulted um, roadmap. Uh, there are disconnections or very um, uh, not easily understandable lane connections. Therefore, when we obtain those kind of readouts, uh, usually we need to take uh, much more manual efforts for post-processing. Um, just to be clarified, uh, he, this is not a critique on late convert. This is um, very useful and powerful tools, but uh, considering the objective that native convert is trying to achieve, and considering the quality and the complexity of the OpenStreetMap data, those errors uh, or those kind of efforts is uh, can kind of not uh, avoidable uh, from my understanding. So here comes to the first question. So what is the objective of the, of the net convert? The net convert basically is trying to generate a real world scenario. So it need to keep every details and make it 100% or at, at least uh, more uh, as constant as possible with the real world. So those kind of scenario can be used or usually used in the domain or the community for simulating uh, real world cases. Uh, and uh, But uh, in contrast to those real world scenario, there is another kind of scenario called synthetic scenarios. And uh, as an uh, example here, I show you the grid Zumo scenario or also like other scenarios which only contains one or two intersections. Um, researchers also like to use them because sometimes their uh, research objective is not really need a real scenario and uh, uh, such kind of synthetic can also fulfill re their requirements. Um, however, uh, at Huawei, so we are trying to use uh, cloud technology and uh, to uh, run very large scale simulation. Therefore, our research topics, uh, core research topics is kind of like uh, in the distribution area, distributed or parallel execution of uh, uh, traffic simulation. Therefore, we uh, find that there's a problem if we want to have a very large scale um, road network, which also need to have the typical mix of low and high road density, which need to reflect the traffic patterns as a real world. And uh, more important, it should it need to be error free in terms of the lane connection, the road connection. And um, also, we do not want to take too many efforts on generating such a scenario because this is not really our key uh, research concept. Um, therefore, uh, we find it's very hard to have one uh, uh, from the literature we, we find or from the tools we can use. Uh, in, therefore, we propose uh, a, a new tools, which is uh, uh, C++ uh, codes uh, based tool and the public in the, uh, in the GitHub under MIT license. And the, the goal of our tool is to generate an error-free lane level road networks at scale. So it takes only OpenStreetMap data as the only data source, and it can preserve the similar topology information, like the road layout, road classifications, and intersection locations. And uh, on the other side, we also simplify and delete many, many uh, complex uh, information, because this is, for instance, like the co real lane connections or the ramps, et cetera. Um, in the end, we can get a uh, road network in any arbitrary large and uh, which uh, can reflect the 
uh, similar traffic patterns and can be used for our benchmarking or our test uh, work. Um, so how did we do that? Uh, let's take a close look at the uh, methodology. And uh, so as the very first, I would like to introduce uh, our core concept. So as you can see here, that this is a, a intersection. Uh, we got, uh, this is a satellite image from an intersection, and this is how it is represented in OpenStream, OpenStream at OSM data. So in OSM data, Y intersection consists multiple lanes, uh, multiple curves, and also eight nodes. And uh, if we uh, directly use uh, NAT convert to generate, so this is a pipeline for NAT convert, and uh, uh, we know there's also any uh, many other settings, but this is in the default settings, it will convert the results like this. So there are sub intersection inside it and it will cause dead logs or other real behaviors if we put traffic here. Um, therefore, we are thinking um, the problem here actually is uh, this data representation. Uh, in OSM, it doesn't have a concept called intersection. So if we can, our TSM, it, what it does is it simplify this uh, OpenStreetMap data. So simplify this uh, intersection into just one, uh, two lines. So each of them represent a road and uh, the crossing point is, uh, then it, it will be the intersections, right? And if we feed this data, this also uh, simplified OSM and data to net convert, and uh, we can simply get a uh, very clear and correct uh, intersection. I use correct uh, because this is not exactly the same as a real world, but for our demand, if we just want to uh, make it similar as a real world, uh, it uh, achieves our goals. So if we compare to the uh, direct conversion, we can find that the, the improvement or uh, yeah, the improvement that our tool can, can achieve. Um, yeah, this is a core concept. So we basically, what we want to do is merge the dual lines together, a dual width together to just use one line to rep represent the road and one node to represent the intersection. So uh, therefore the first step uh, we need to do is we need to simplify the streets. And uh, as a sub -step, uh, uh, the first sub step of it, we need to form the lines. So line, lines is a concept that we come up with. Uh, basically, it means uh, corridors, which uh, consists of multiple uh, ways here. You can see that uh, in the original OpenStreetMap data that a line or a road consists of multiple ar arbitrary lane, uh, lane uh, long ways. And you can see that the, the, this, uh, this is very complex to deal with if we want to identify the crack, uh, the, the uh, relation uh, among those ways. So we, we are thinking, so why don't we just connect them together and we use one single data unit to represent them. And this is the lines we cut. So the method to generate the line is uh, quite simple. Uh, as I showed here, we start from an arbitrary way and searching forward and backward. Uh, in this case, we just uh, uh, show how it does uh, in the backward. And uh, then we calculate the angle. If the angle is less than the threshold angle, less than the search value, which is confirmed configurable at the very first. And uh, we will add this way also into the lines. Uh, in this way, it will keep the line has a very similar direction as a way, as the way should have. And uh, another notable situation is that uh, usually there could be uh, multiple ways uh, in the after. So uh, we did the, the very same uh, calculation here. We calculated the angle and we choose the smallest the angle as a way to form the lines. And uh, uh, if the, oh, and if the angle is larger than the threshold, uh, as in this case, this line will not be count as the next way uh, in the line. So um, as a result, uh, this is how we form the line. You can see that before there are uh, five ways and right now uh, a major line is formed. So we basically apply this algorithm for, to the OpenStreetMap data. And uh, in this process, we reduce the complexity by combining the ways into lines and uh, uh, can achieve such a, of a, a result. Um, then once we have the lines, then next we want to merge them together because uh, clearly those two lines, we can see they basically have the very similar shape. Uh, have a similar length, and also they are uh, 
kind of approximately parallel. So if we can just use one uh, single line as a readout show here, then we can reduce the complexity a lot. So how, but the problem here is how should we identify that those two lines should be merged together? Uh, in, this, uh, pr in this case, we uh, pros, uh, propose a um, uh, novel approach, we call it buffer approach. Um, so um, still let's follow the uh, animation. At the very first, we will locate as the longest line in the road network, and we will generate a polygon along with this line with a configurable width. And uh, this is the so-called buffer. And then if there are other lines which is covered or um, covered by the buffer to some extent, we will uh, merge this line or delete this line. Uh, and then, but we will also uh, add the attribute of the line uh, into the uh, remaining lines. So basically then we just need to repeat this process again. Uh, you can see right now the longest line is this one and uh, generate the buffer and uh, remove the lines inside the buffer. So in this case, you can see that this is what we got as a result before this intersection consists of four lines and uh, four nodes. And right now it just um, uh, has uh, two single lines which represent the bidirectional uh, ways or bidirectional streets. Uh, if we take a look back at the uh, uh, first slide I introduced here, this is a core concept. You can see this is how we uh, achieved that from the uh, top to, to next. Um, so um, the, after simplifying the streets, uh, next what we need to, to do is basically generating the intersections. Um, uh, apparently that if two lines uh, have a crossing point, then we will take the crossing point as a location of the intersections. But uh, this uh, works in most of the cases, as you see these uh, green spots, uh, but still some additional processing is required. Uh, like here, there are a disconnection and here there are a very uh, sharp curve. This is what we do not want to see in the final uh, Zumo road network. Um, to solve that, we first, uh, I want to show why uh, there is such a problem. Uh, so if this is original open stream map data, after the simplification, after the simplification of all the roads, this is the result we have. So this is exactly the sharp curve and this is a disconnection. So in order to make this as a normal intersection, the next step uh, we need to do is we will extend all the lines to, uh, to a length and uh, then uh, we can find that the extension of the lines will have uh, two new crossing points with the vertical lines. And uh, in the next step, we've just uh, merged those two together and uh, compared to status zero, right now we are in uh, status three. If we fit this into net convert, we can basically have a decent uh, 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 intersection that can be used in simulation. And if from a large scale uh, perspective, uh, we basically keep the same uh, topology information as it should be. Um, in the, in, right now we have all the intersections. So uh, in, in order to generate the intersection finally in the road, in the, in the, to simulate, we uh, use the templates to uh, deploy into the each point. And there are overall three templates right now we, uh, is supported. Uh, so but this is all based on the, uh, road types, for instance, in the in the last case, if this is a freeway, freeway uh, crossing uh, points uh, of two freeways, then we will add the template ramps to make sure that there should be no interruption uh, of the traffic flow in the freeway, uh, as what it, it should be. Um, yeah, so this is um, the methodology I want to show uh, how we did that. And then I briefly talk about uh, uh, evaluation. So this is- Sorry to interrupt, you have uh, three minutes remaining. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is a real world case. Uh, you can see this uh, on the left is the original map. So we converted, uh, simplified it uh, into a simplified version. So the color represents the road type. Uh, basically, we keep the, all the information I said already introduced. And uh, moreover, there are a more uh, detailed comparison for the same uh, intersection, how it is converted. One is uh, by default converting, and one is by the recommended settings from the net convert. And another is first we 
do the simplification. You can see that uh, the net convert, uh, especially the net convert with the recommended settings, uh, it can deal with uh, simple intersections. It can merge them together. But for a much more complicated case, uh, it, this uh, generate the two sub intersections instead of a correct one. But uh, I mean, in, the, in our uh, proposed tools, it can form a correct uh, intersections. Um, yeah, so um, as a conclusion, so what I think our main contribution is that we propose the tools that can be used to uh, increase the automation level, automation level of road network prototyping. And also we believe that this is a good trade-off between precession and automation. Uh, we, uh, are, we believe that it can uh, greatly improve the availability of arbitrary large and usable road networks on top of available open stream uh, data. Uh, so in the next, uh, we, we basically right now we are working on to identify the turn restrictions and also deal with the roundabouts. Uh, so uh, to uh, further improve our tools. Um, Yes, uh, I hope I uh, make it on time and uh, thank you uh, for your listening. Uh, if there is still time for questions, I, it will be uh, uh, really welcome. Yeah, thank you.